Hello there, I'm Nick, and welcome back to Sonic Speed Reading. So far, all we've done on this show is cover the IDW Sonic book and the four core heroes from the games and their place in this story. But today, we're going to be focusing on a character made specifically for this book, a very unique lemur. I like to move it, move it. No, not I that like one. We're talking Tangle. This particular lemur is an adventure-loving, cheery little dynamo of a gal, the personification of bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. She uses her long, prehensile tail to take out robots in between Peloton classes. Seriously, look at her. Girl takes care of herself, all decked out in yoga gear, and look at that! She even knows how to properly apply athletic tape. Good on you, lady. Before we get into too much about her character specifically, let's summarize issue four, the book she first appears in. The story follows the same basic setup as the first three issues of the IDW run. Sonic zips through a town, runs into one of his buddies, they establish their relationship for the reader, solve the problem, and Sonic speeds along to the next adventure. This time, Sonic comes across a giant buzz bomber dropping badniks on a little town known as Spiral Hill Village. As he zips into town, he finds a surprise. It looks as if the resistance have beat him there, but nope, turns out one of the locals has started smacking robots around on her own. And this is where Sonic and the readers first meet Tangle. And I keep wanting to say Tingle, but like, oh boy. <laughs> These two sociable animals immediately hit it off and hit the faces off the badniks. The comic team is showing off all the neat tricks she can pull off with that tail and how well it works with spin balls. Also, like, Sonic pulling on her tail is, uh, I mean, like, he, he looks really into it. And boy, she, uh, she's really into it. I mean, like, really into it. From there, Blaze shows up out of nowhere and gets more real estate in her panel than Tangle did in the very first anything she's ever been in. From here, Tangle is the outsider looking in. Sonic is the hero of this world, chatting it up with a trans-dimensional fire princess who's also a purple cat. While this is all zany nonsense to Tangle, to Sonic, it's just another Tuesday. It makes sense to bring in one of the more obscure yet interesting characters from the games that doesn't get a lot of attention outside of, well, in Blaze's case, outside of the Rush games. Maybe you've never heard of this cat. That's fine. Tangle hasn't either. Both of these characters are going to be important down the road, but today, it's all about Tangle. So let's keep the focus on her. Like I said, the comic plays out like the others. Robots get sorted, Sonic runs off, but thankfully, this would not be the last time Tangle tangles with his crew. We aren't going to break down every single adventure she's been on due to this being an ongoing comic that would immediately get outdated because I don't want to spoil anything because her journey is one worth reading. We'll be dabbling in some other bits of her character that get revealed, but it's just going to be a general overview from here on out. A wiki article with less information but a whole lot more charm, which I mean is basically any character bio video on YouTube, so... Well, wh whatever, we all watch them. Outside of Sonic himself, Tangle became the representative of things to come for the new book prior to its launch. As the news was coming out of IDW obtaining the Sonic license, bringing staff from the Archie series on board, and the general direction of the book, IDW began teasing a brand new character for the series. And if it wasn't bad enough that Amy Rose stole Sally Acorn's identity, Tangle has to go and steal her haircut. Talk about a slap in the face to Archie fans. Can you believe the nerve? Ian is destroying Sonic. I blame every single problem on this one writer because he killed the horse guy. I don't even remember his name, but that's not the point. The mandates aren't real. Bring back horse guy. Tingle came about because IDW wanted a kick-butt female character that could fight right alongside Sonic. And I mean... Those already exist, but it's clear that IDW and I'm sure Sega and the creative team wanted to do something to help this specific Sonic comic stand out from what came before. I would certainly love to see some other characters show back up, but failing that, as long as these new guys are fleshed out and they're well written, the more the merrier in my opinion. And Tangle is certainly a welcome addition. I really like this character and how she fits into this universe because it feels like she was built from the ground up to make sense in a Sonic game. They picked out a specific species of animal and basically gave her a super ability namely in the form of her incredibly useful, extending, prehensile tail. And this design process really echoes how a lot of playable characters in Sonic games came about. Like seriously, this lemur was apparently based off this rabbit design. Before they settled on Sonic, this rabbit prototype got probably the furthest along in terms of design and mechanics, as it was originally intended to use its ears to grab and throw items. Sega eventually went with the hedgehog, but goodness gracious, they've certainly gotten a lot of mileage out of this unused character. As did Namco, apparently. For real, the more I think about it, Tangle is probably the closest we are ever going to get to having Klonoa in the Sonic universe, which just makes her that much cooler in my book. Ian Flynn came up with the concept of the character, and good old Tyson Hess sorted out the design. 
Tangle is born of two big Sonic fans who have had years of experience on the professional end of things, and it shows. This feels like a character they invested a lot of creativity into, and almost feels like a pitch for a new character in the games, be it 2D or 3D. My brain just goes wild with the possibilities of that tale, as does Tangle herself apparently calm it down, girl. I also love the prominent use of orange coloring on her clothing, standing out nicely against the neutral grays of her fur and the blacks of the rest of the attire, and contrasts lovely against her purple eyes. Tyson really understands understands the basics of a solid character design, let alone Sonic character design. And every creator, be it artist or writer, does a lovely job bringing out the animated energy of her personality on these pages. Ironically, she actually only exists in still images. She looks desperate to jump out into a game or cartoon, something where she can actually move. Tangle works not just because of her power set and design, but her personality is so well defined. It might seem weird that she just immediately is buddy-buddy with these iconic characters that have weathered and won a war but she just has one of those magnetic personalities. The best kind of extrovert. Not someone out for attention, but someone who genuinely enjoys other people. And I've certainly met people like this. I'm sure you have too. Someone who can latch onto anything you say and strike up an entire conversation. Super capable, funny, energetic, and will still cheer you on without a shred of sarcasm. There is no patronizing, just genuine enthusiasm for every little drop of life. Someone who can even bring the most introverted of introverts out of their shell, help them overcome tragedy, tragedy and help them learn to open up. When it comes to Whisper, another character who we'll get into in another episode, she is the polar opposite of Tangle. It's not easy for her to be a part of a group. Even simple one-on-one -on -one conversations stress her out. Sonic, like Tangle, is a people person. Difference is he knows when to back off and give some space. Tangle does not. At least not at first, but getting ahead of myself. I love that we don't actually see the moment where Tangle and Whisper actually hit it off. Sonic walks into a scene with the two of them just talking, and Whisper immediately goes quiet around him. She has no problem with Sonic, she's shy and he understands that and gives her space. Tangle had not even noticed this about Whisper. She tells Sonic that Whisper had just told her the funniest joke. And for those that have been following along, that will probably feel completely out of character for Whisper. What we've been presented, what Whisper has been willing to share, it doesn't seem like this girl's even capable of laughing, let alone be funny. But Tangle is just that easy to open up to. And that cute little moment is shared between these two friends and only between these two friends. And I think that's adorable. And it speaks volumes to the infectious joy of Tangle. Again, we'll be dedicating an episode to Whisper, but I can't talk Tangle without at least mentioning her. This is a wonderful friendship between two completely different personalities. Instead of butting heads, these two help balance the other out. That is all I can really say without diving deep into what makes Whisper tick and jumping into spoilers. But just believe me when I tell you that their friendship is precious and is worth reading. But Whisper is not the only friend of Tangle. She also has a lifelong friend in Jewel the Beetle. Soak in that color scheme, kids, because this is probably the closest we will ever get to another appearance of Hypersonic. Hopefully the stories will develop this bug a little bit more down the road, but right now all you really need to know is she's Tangle's best friend and helps ground this rambunctious lemur, literally keeping her alive from time to time. Jewel is not an adrenaline junkie like her buddy, and has not really shown much in the way of courage in the few times we've seen her. Not that she would really need to with Tangle protecting her town. That actually ends up being a bit of a conflict for Tangle. Once she gets a taste of the kind of action Sonic and his buddies get up to, coming back to the mundanity of Spiral Hill is torturous. This frustration is her drive that kicks things off in the Tangle and Whisper miniseries. We'll talk about it in another video. I'm not going to spoil it here, but if you don't want to know anything about anything, there are going to be some mild spoilers going forward, so just a heads up. One little interesting note, Tangle seems to be extremely claustrophobic. Even wearing a mask is overwhelming for her. But what's more interesting is how she knows when to dial back from the zany charm when people are counting on her. This becomes apparent when she gets locked away in a safe. For her, this is possibly the absolute worst way to go. But instead of panicking, she understands the air is limited and trusts that Whisper is going to bail her out. This has to be one of the most terrifying situations she's ever experienced. And she still uses that optimism and trust to see her through. And this wouldn't be the only time. And so Certainly not the darkest. Figuratively, anyway, this safe is probably literally the darkest situation she's ever... Because there's no lights and it's dark in there. You... Even when Whisper busts her out, once Tangle realizes the building they're in is going to blow, she grabs her wolf baby and jumps right back in. I wasn't really planning on doing much outside of laying out who this character is, not really list a bunch of her feats or story beats, but to really get into the depth of her kindness, her enthusiasm, her strength of character, we'd have to get into spoilers of an arc that's yet to wrap up. So let's just leave it here for now. Down the road, you will 
see, even in the bleakest of situations, Tango will be as determined as ever, believing in herself and her friends. That is why she fits with Sonic's crew, because they are heroes. They are all courageous. What makes them stand out is how they show their courage, how they tackle these challenges set before them. If you're coming into this book as a fan of the games, I hope you see how much fun Tango can be in a game. And yeah, Archie fans, just because I haven't talked about that book yet, don't get it twisted. I miss the Freedom Fighters too. Don't let my praise of this new book fool you. I want them back. I don't like when a wonderful set of characters is just set aside and wasted. And I certainly hope that isn't the case for the IDW crew either. It's a new era. Get this girl into the games. Sega, if you're so concerned with a unified brand identity, then stop diverging timelines and dimensions. Sort your house out. Buy that horse man from Penders. There's one guy who's real upset about this stupid horse. All right, and that's where we're gonna end today's episode. Next time, we're gonna be talking about Whisper, and after that, we're gonna be getting into some of the story arcs for the IDW book. So there will be spoilers ahead, so I highly recommend you get caught up before that point. After that, we got Archie, we got Fleetway. If you got an opinion on where we should guide this next, well, jump onto my Patreon. We got a private Discord server up, and I talk with folks all the time and get suggestions from them about what they wanna see on this show. They also usually get this show early. I do apologize, guys. This one is just coming out for everyone at the same time, but for more Working on a couple of projects for you guys that I think are gonna really blow you away. I'm really excited to share that when I can share that. Just have to show that I can stay on a specific schedule first. So yeah, if you wanna help support the show, you can pitch in on Patreon. And if you don't have money to spend, I certainly can't blame you, times are tough. But if you can share, if you can like, if you can even throw a comment down there, I'd greatly appreciate it. I always love the feedback. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that noise. You know how all this stuff works. And I will see you guys next time. Toot toot Sonic Speed Readers.